Okay, in this video, I would like to go over the solutions to quiz three. Okay, uh, so let's look at each problem in turn. All right, we had the first double integral here, the integral from zero to one, one e to the y, f of x, y, dx, dy. I gave that a name, I'm calling it i, so I can reference it later. Okay. Now, we need to, what, interchange the order of uh, integration here, okay? The limits of integration are going to change then because we're going to change the order in which we integrate here, okay? So we're going to go dy dx instead. Alrighty, now, what we need to do in order to do that is give figure out the region of the xy plane, which is actually being integrated over given these limits of integration, okay? Now, the first thing you can see here is uh, that look at the outer integral. Now, the second integral, okay, think of it as an iterated integral. We're integrating this inner integral first with respect to x, and that will give us, what, a function of y. And then once we have that function of y, we would integrate that function of y with respect to y from 0 to 1. So you can see here, y is actually going from what? 0 to 1. Okay, so go ahead and graph y equals 0. Okay, y equals 0 would just be what? The x-axis. y equals 1 would be what? This horizontal line, y equals 1 right there. Okay, you can see I use Desmos to graph this. Okay, and I will post these solutions online. Alrighty, so we see the limits as far as y go, these two horizontal lines. Okay, now, let's look at the inner limits here. Here I've got x going from what? 1 to x equals e to the y. So x equals 1, that's easy. That's this vertical line right here. So that's x equals 1. Okay. Now here I've got x equals e to the y. Now, x is equal to e to the y if and only if what? y is the natural logarithm of x. Okay x has to be greater than 0 for this to work here, and that's clearly true. Okay, so what are the limits of integration here on the inside? We would be going, if we're integrating in the y direction first, okay, so we're really looking at the graph here. Let's look at the region first. So this is what, uh, this is x equals 1, and this is x equals e to the y, better known as, okay, y equals the natural logarithm of x. So those represent the same thing. Okay, but now I have y as a function of x here. Now I'm going to integrate first in the y direction. Okay, uh, so I'm going to be integrating in the y direction first. Those are supposed to be vertical lines, and that's a picket here. Okay, anyway, so those are supposed to be vertical. <clears throat> Okay, you can see it's sort of a pseudo-triangular region that we're integrating over. But we'd be integrating in the y direction first, right? Okay, where is y going from and to? y is going to, as a function of x, the natural logarithm of x always, up to what? 1. So it's natural logarithm of x up to 1. And then if we imagine projecting this region, all right, down onto the xy, or down onto the x-axis, Okay, this is the x-axis there. You can see I would get all real numbers between what? 1 and actually where these two intersect is actually at e. That's actually e there. Okay. Alrighty, so we would be integrating from what? 1 to e. Right down there, that is e. Okay, so this is what you should have had for number 1. Okay. All right, let's look at number two here. The integral from zero to one, x to one, g, x of y, x comma y, dy, dx. Okay, and I gave that a name i again. Okay, let's figure out the region of integration here. x, okay, that's our outer variable here. x is going from what? Zero to one. So let's graph x equals zero. That would be what? The y-axis here. Okay. This is x equals 0. x equals 1 would be another vertical line here. 
thing, x equals 1. Okay, so we just have these. Those would be part of the boundary of our, our region here. Now here on the inside, we've got y, right? The inner integral is in terms of y. So this means y is going from x to y equals 1. Now y equals x, that's what? This line, 45 degree line through the origin. So this would be slope 1, if you wish. That's y equals x, right? Or x equals y, same thing. I make that comment right there. <laughs> Slightly different emphasis. And then what? Uh, y equals 1. y equals 1 would be this horizontal line. So we put these all together, and you see the region over which we're integrating. Okay? Okay? If you're integrating in the y direction, you would be going from what? y equals x. Okay, so you'd be going from x to 1. And then x would be going from what? 0 to 1 when we project that down onto the x-axis. That's precisely what we have. But we don't want to do that, right? We want to actually, what, integrate in the x direction first. So we're going to be going this way. Okay, so we're going to integrate this way. Okay. So that's a little differential change in y. That's supposed to be horizontal, but use your imagination. Then I break this down, little changes in x here, right? Now, where is x going from and to here? x always starts at what? The y-axis. So x always starts at 0, and then it goes out to what? In terms of y, y itself. So it's going from what? 0. x is going from 0, right? Right there, to y. OK. And then if I project this onto the y-axis, I would be going from what? 0 to 1, as you can see. So this is what you should have had for your answer for number 2. <clears throat> Not too bad. The toughest one was probably number 3. Okay, So I took some pains here on this one to try to make this clear to you. Uh, finding the limits of integration were, was the tough part. Okay, Let's first look at the region. Okay. We're integrating from pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2, sine of x to 1, h of xy, dy, dx, and I gave that the name i. Okay? Okay, so let's say x is going from what? Pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2. Now, I've got this here, right here. Let me label this now. x is pi over 2. Okay? Now, I've colored these different regions differently to help us out on this one, because I know some people were having difficulty setting up the limits here. Okay, there's x equals pi over 2. And then over here, I guess I shouldn't use a different color, but I think we can do it. x equals 5 halves pi, or 5 pi over 2. You can see that there on that, and the same thing on that there. Okay, so those two vertical lines, those will be part of the boundary here. Okay, now let's look at the inner integral. Uh, that's with respect to y, so y equals sine of x. Okay, so what I graphed here was y equals the sine of x. Okay, here's actually the x-axis. It may not look like it. It looks it's white, this thing. Okay, there's the x-axis, and here by the way, is the y-axis right here. OK. Anyway. <clears throat> and then, uh, so I've graphed that. So I've got y equals the sine of x. Then I've got y equals 1. There, I've written that there. So that's a horizontal line. So that's parallel to the uh, x-axis where y is 0. OK. All righty. Now, can you put these all together? Can you figure out what the region of integration is? Okay, where we're integrating from and to. I hope you can. It is the region bounded by this point and this point. This line, y equals 1, and the sine here. So it includes that, that, all of this, and all of this. Okay? All right, it's all that. 
see my motion here. It's all that. That's where you're integrating with respect to. <clears throat> okay, that's the region, in other words. No, with respect to. Anyway, okay. All righty. So you have to know where we, what you're integrating over. That's why we're graphing all these things. All righty. Now, I want to turn around my uh, limits of integration here, right? Or the, my order of integration. So I want to go dx dy. Okay. So if I imagine uh, going in the, uh, you know, the x direction first, I'm going to be coming this way. Okay. Integrating in the x direction. Okay. So let's say I've got a particular uh, value of y that's fixed. Let's say y is equal to b. This is where people got stuck here. Okay, so let's say y is, is, is a particular fixed value, y is b. So see what I'm imagining, I don't want to really draw this in there, but I've got these little horizontal pickets, right? And I'm going across this way, I'm integrating like this in the x direction first. I've got to figure out what my limits of integration are. Now for a particular value of y, I just went y equals b, okay? It's going to intersect the graph generally in two points, right? That yellow point that I'm calling B there, and this point I'm calling C over here. Now I need to get the coordinates of those points B and C in terms of, well, the Y coordinate, the X coordinate is what I'm really after, right, in terms of Y. Um, I need the X coordinates of the point B and C, okay? Now, you can see that this is going to be what? I'm going to be looking at Y equals the sine of X. Okay, y equals the sine of x, and I want x in terms of y, so I'll be looking at arc sine, or sine inverse, if you like that language better. So what I also did here, just to make this clearer for you, is to go ahead and graph uh, the sine function, not just from pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2, but from minus pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2. The reason I did that is because if you're taking x values from minus 5 pi minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, this is where when you take the sine inverse, you'll actually get the angle of y, you'll actually get the angle, right, is always going to be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, okay? So in other words, uh, if, I, if I go like this, I, if I, it's going to intersect some point here, right, which I'm calling A, okay? That's actually sine inverse, okay? So point A has these coordinates arc sine of b, and then the y coordinate is b, okay? Because remember, the arc sine, like I just said, is always between what? Or the sine inverse, if you like that terminology better. It's always between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Now, my answer is going to be in terms of the arc sine. So what I'm going to do is uh, consider what's happening here with this point A, okay? So the point A has x coordinate being just what? The arc sine, okay? of whatever the y value is. Now I'm calling that y value b. You know, in general, that would I would just have y there instead of b. But I'm trying to be real concrete about this. Okay? Now, what is the x-coordinate of b? What's the x-coordinate of b? Well, the clue to this is the following. If you actually look at the graph, these two points, a and b, are always symmetric around the value pi over 2, right here. So the x-coordinates of a and b are always symmetric around pi over 2. So that means their average should be, what, pi over 2, right? So if I add them together, the x-coordinates of those two points, and divide by 2, I should get pi over 2. So the actual uh, x-coordinate of the point b here is going to be, whoops, oh, man, I made a typo. These two should be turned around. Okay, so the b's here on this side comma b. That's the y coordinate. I have to go back and change that. Anyway, there it is. Okay. Um, do you notice that in order to have an average being pi over 2 all the time, that this value here must be pi minus arc sine of b. Okay. Average these two values. What do you get? Add them together, divide by 2, you get pi over 2, just like we want. Okay. All righty. Looks like I did the same thing over here. I'll have to go back and correct things. Okay. All right. Now, that's for point B. 
we're really interested in point B, right, for our limits of integration, okay? Point A served the purpose of what? Relating it to the arc sine. Point B, this is going to be one of our, that's going to be the lower limit of integration, okay, in the x direction. The upper limit of integration in the x direction is going to be the x coordinate of C, right? Now, here's what you want to notice here, that the point B and C, the x coordinates are always going to be what? Symmetrical around 3 halves pi, okay? Symmetrical around 3 halves pi. So, if you work out those details then, what expression would I have to have so that when I average these two now, these two values now, what do I get? I get, it actually turns out to be 2 pi plus the arc sine of b. Take the average of these two, what would you get? You would have, well, the arc sines would drop out, and you would have what? 3 pi divided by 2, 3 halves pi, perfect. Okay, so point C has these coordinates, 2 pi plus the arc sine of b comma b. Okay, but these are what we're interested in in there. So the lower limit is going to be what? Pi minus the arc sine of b of, well, in, the, in general, it's going to be y, okay? So it's going to be pi minus the arc sine of y, and then 2 pi plus the arc sine of y, okay? Now I've written that there, okay? That's where you're integrating in the x direction, okay? By the way, if I project this region we talked about onto the xy plane, I'll get everything from what? Minus 1 to 1. So there you go. So we'll go, y goes from minus 1 to 1. Alrighty. Okay. So there you go. Uh, by the way, at the end here, I have a little addendum uh, that you might like to look at. If you have this in general, the equation where you're looking at, uh, you know, trying to, trying to solve for this uh, equation the sine of theta equals b in general. And you want all solutions to this? See, it's really a trig problem, isn't it? But if I wanted all solutions to this, how would I find all solutions to this? Okay, and I create a little discussion here. And the answer is down at the bottom. Okay, you can look at that yourselves later. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's look at number four then. This one should have been pretty easy also. Uh, integral from zero to one, y squared to the square root of y, kxy dx dy. Now y is going from zero to one. So from the x-axis up to this, what? Uh, horizontal line, y equals one. And then uh, x is going from y squared. So I've got, if I've got x equals y squared. Okay, what does that look like? And then I've got also got what? Uh, x equals the square root of y. Okay. Okay, you can see which graph is which. If you need any help on that, because you usually think of y as the dependent variable, so I might as well throw this in. Okay, if x is equal to y squared, x and y are positive here, then what? y is actually the square root of x. So that's what this one is, okay? So that's x equals the square root of y. Or, I'm sorry, y equals the square root of x, or x equals y squared, same thing, okay? And then what? y equals uh, the square root of x is the same as y equals x squared. So that's part of this parabola here. So this is y equals x squared. And you can double check here that what we're actually integrating over is this little gray region here. Okay? So double check here. If I was to integrate in the x direction first, I would be going from y squared out to what? The square root of y. And then y would go from 0 to 1. Indeed, perfect. Just so we have here. Instead, I want to go what? I want to go in the uh, y direction first, so I'm going to be going up this way. Okay, if I'm going to integrate in the y direction first. Okay, integrating. Okay, the lower limit would be x squared, right? y equals x squared. The upper limit would be the square root of x. 
So we'd be going from x squared to the square root of x. If I take that region and project it down onto the x-axis, you can see everything will go from 0 to 1. So it looks like i is the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from x squared to the square root of x, k, xy, dy, dx. OK, now did you notice something funny about this one? <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> it looks like we just went through here and uh, exchanged x for y, didn't it? <laughs> of course, not in k we didn't, but everywhere else, that's what it looks like, doesn't it? OK, that's what it looks like. So it's kind of a funny answer. It almost looks the same as the original. OK, the very last problem here. OK. I actually graphed it uh, on Desmos using polar coordinates. Okay, you've got this double integral. I guess I didn't give this a name this time. Okay, I should have. Make some slight changes before I publish this for you guys. Anyways, so here's our integral. We know this is what? Differential area in terms of polar coordinates. We know that's going to be replaced by dx dy or dy dx. All right. Now, let's look. The inner integral is r, right? r is a function of theta. OK. Now for the outer integral, theta is going from 0 to pi over 4. OK. 0 to pi over 4. Inside, r is always going from 0 to 2 secant theta. OK. Now, I understand r equals 0. You're starting at the origin, and you're integrating out to some curve. OK? Let's look at that curve. If r is equal to 2 secant theta, that's really 2 over the cosine, right? Because the reciprocal of the cosine is the secant. OK? Now, I'm going to rewrite it this way. I'm going to go, this is the same as r cosine theta equals 2. OK? So just multiplying on both sides by the cosine of theta. <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's good enough. OK, now, you should recognize r cosine theta. r cosine theta is actually what? Polar coordinates for x, right? x equals r cosine theta. y equals r sine theta, right? Well, we've got r cosine theta, so we've got x equals 2. Oh, OK. Now let's come over here also. I want to talk about this part. Okay. Now you guys know that y over x is going to be the tangent of theta. So I could write it this way y equals x tangent theta. So when y equals 0 is what you get when theta is 0, right? Because the tangent of 0 is 0. How about when the tangent of, uh, or when theta is fixed at what? I'm trying to go like this. Theta is pi over 4. What does that translate into in Cartesian coordinates, right? OK. Well, you could just do this. X over, or y over x is the tangent of theta. The tangent of theta times x should give you y, then. Uh, here, theta equals pi over 4 in the, Carte in the uh, I'm sorry, the polar plane here is just this line, right? This is theta equals pi over 4. OK. If uh, theta is always pi over 4, then I'm looking at y equals x times the tangent of pi over 4. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1, so I'm looking at y equals x. So this is actually the line y equals x. The other line here is just y equals 0. Uh, that's really the x-axis. And then I had what? x equals 2. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. But I, this is actually done in, well, you, you should see the grid lines. This is in polar coordinates here. You might practice that on Desmos there. OK. <clears throat> so what region are we integrating over? We're integrating over this triangle, actually. See, r always goes from 0 out to what? All right, that's supposed to be straight, but there it is. r goes out to what? This, which has equation given by r equals 2 secant theta, right? That's where r is going from. 
and then theta is going from 0 to pi over 4. Okay? By the way, on Desmos, you know, you, you look at what I've drawn here. Desmos, uh, incredibly, will not do graph things like this. Theta equals pi over 4. The only thing Desmos will graph is uh, r as a function of theta, like r equals 2 secant theta. Okay? That's all, all it'll do. And you can see, like I said, you just get the vertical line, x equals 2. Incredible. Okay? Now, over the first quadrant, you guys should know this, you can find theta by going what? The arctangent y over x. Okay? x is not 0 there. And r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, so if I'm integrating over this uh, gray triangle here, we could think of it this way. F, uh, did you forget this part? F of r theta becomes what? What's r? Oh, crap, I turned that around too. These are supposed to be interchanged. Okay, well, I'll make those corrections there. Well, that should be what? r theta, those would be interchanged. So it's f of the square root of x squared plus y squared and then the arctangent of y over x. I went, now let's go in the y direction first, then the x direction. If I go, go in the y direction first, I'd be going from what? Zero out to x, right? And then what would, where would uh, x be going? You'd be going from zero to two, okay? Going from zero to two. So that's one way to get a Cartesian. What's the other way to do it? Again, these two should be interchanged here, okay? Let's say I wanted to go in the x direction first. Okay, I've got to get x in terms of y here over on this lower boundary. So I'd be going from what? y out to 2. Okay, you see that here? y out to 2. And then where? Where's y going from and 2? y is going everywhere from what? 0 to 2. Okay, 0 to 2. dx dy. Okay? All right, so there's the answers there. Okay, I better make some corrections. I got backwards typos. Okay, uh, you might go through this as well, this little addendum. It'll probably be helpful for you. Okay, all right. Well, I hope you learned something by doing all this. There you go.